Hey guys, it's Spaces Sims, and we are back with more Radiant Tale, continuing Ion's route. Last part, we were filled with the dumbest dumbs that ever dumbed. I mean, seriously, again? I get it. They gotta set up stupid things for plot purposes, and that's pretty much standard in everything, but like, God, sometimes it's just glaringly dumb, and that's all of us right now, except for Zephora. Although, Zephora did not point out that it was stupid to bring the prince with us with Ion, but like, here we are, so all hell's gonna break loose. I'm gonna guess starting in this part, you know, because we've kind of set it up as like, oh, hey, we're gonna go look for that ring that can control Ion. Hey, how about we have the prince go with Ion? Sounds like a good idea. Oh, hey, Balto's got it? Cool, let's go tell him that he can't have it and he better give it over. And he said, tomorrow, bro. And we were like, cool. So, like, I mean, we're, we're at the point where I don't, I don't think any more dumb decisions could be made. Well, Zephora had a bright one. We're going to sneak in the back door. So let's see how that works out. And maybe it'll work out that way and there won't be, like, a big dramatic thing. But I kind of feel like there's going to be a big dramatic thing. But I would guess it's happening in this part. But who knows? Anyway. Wait. You mean stealing? Oh my god. Girl, get over it! Good gut. Don't be a goody toot. Listen, let's not start this part with you being a goddamn goody two shoes making me want to slap you, girl. Shut up for a little bit, will you? You'll get us noticed by the guard. And that will not be a problem. I shall take him out before he can even see us. That's not my issue here. Again, why did we bring the narc? I.e. me. That night, just sneak into his mansion and grab the ring. I was steamrolled into following Zephora's plan. I like how we're like, whoa, whoa, we're gonna steal it? While we're here about to break in. Okay, I lied. I guess I didn't think anything could happen that was gonna be continue on the rolling down the hill of dumbness, but that was that. <laughs> It's fine, but you know what I mean? It's slightly like, this is not the time where you're like, okay, we're going to have the plan and we're going to sneak in and then all of a sudden you get there and you're like, wait, wait, we're stealing it? Where were you when they were plotting this? <laughs> it's a four like, come on guys, follow me. And then we got there and then he told us the plan. <laughs> Shit's happening. I really do love this game, but you got to laugh at some of the absurdity and like, this, this does not stop it. Like, oh, good God. Anyway. Breaking the law, we slipped past the guards and infiltrated Balto's mansion. Um, okay. Okay. I can I can understand her being like, whoa, 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 we're doing illegal shit? Yeah, but like, have we not? Okay. okay. I get her. I get it. I get it. Okay, I'm not, I'm not faulting her for being like, whoa, I don't want to do illegal things. Because like, I don't want to do illegal things either. I mean, most of us still do illegal things. Like, you know, speed. It's technically illegal. The speed limit is like, it's 35 and you're doing like 40, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, we all do little things that are like, ah, oh, whatever. But there's, there's speed limits for a reason. You know what I mean? But like, breaking and entering and stealing is absolutely fucking wrong. Okay. I'm with her on that. However, let's just take a step back and be like, okay, who are we stealing from? Some nice, innocent people? Well, that would be questionable, even though the ring is dangerous and, like, whatever. I mean, you could swing it that way. The ring is extremely dangerous. It should be in the country's control, the king, whatever, and nobody should have this. Okay, cool. Kind of understand that, and we tried to get it back through legal means. However, Balto is a shady fuck who murdered two people and turned an entire city Against its rightful fucking heir, in a way. And chased out a child. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there that I don't think breaking and entering and stealing from him is just even remotely as bad as what he deserves. So, like, I think we're fine here. You know? I mean, it doesn't make stealing right. But, like, come on. We're stealing from a murderer. Probably actually worse, because we're going to get murdered. <laughs> It's not really justifying it, but I think we could, like, skirt around and get over it, is what I'm saying. Uh. Ugh. I can't believe we turned the prince into a common criminal. Oh, okay, if that's what you're worried about. All right. What am I doing? 
I'm supposed to be his mentor. It's okay, Spacey. I'm a traveler now, not a prince. <laughs> this kid's like, is that right? Let's stab him while we're at it. <laughs> you know what I love? The fact that this child should be the innocent, naive one, and he is like, way more on the ball with shit than we are. That's sad. Thank you, Calivis, but you still shouldn't be experiencing something like this. Valid. Well, a small sacrifice for the greater good. Hurry up and get used to it already. Ginia, exactly. Thank you. Can someone point out that Balto's a murderer? I don't want to get used to it. I'm only able to do this because it's for Ion. Which is kind of cute. She's like, I will only do awful things for Ion. Not because Balto's a murderer. Yeah, that's still wrong. <laughs> With a heavy sigh, I gave up trying to argue and looked around. The silence of the night filled Balto's dazzling, lavish mansion. And this is strange. I cannot sense anyone's presence at all. Balto's here, right? Yeah, I have a reliable source here. Maybe everyone is sleeping. It's already late at night, after all. Well, that would indeed be nice. I do not think it will be that easy. And there's a chance he set up some traps. Let us proceed with caution. Slowly we began to investigate the mansion. We opened doors one by one while keeping careful watch of our surroundings. <laughs> I like how they set this up like we're peeking through a crack. Finally, we arrived at the lobby we had been into earlier. We'd been in earlier. Well, a foul odor came from the crack of the open door. <laughs> Ion immediately grabbed Calivis and I with a grim face, holding us pressed against him. Oh. Ion, what happened? Close your eyes. Do not look. This is... The stench of death? Blood. What appeared before my eyes was a man lying in a sea of blood, his body not moving in the slightest. Oh, oh, Balto knew that Zephora was here. He knew this was going to happen and he set us the fuck up. That would actually make sense. I don't know if the game's going to go that route because the game has so, so far done a lot of shit that doesn't make sense. But like, I'm standing over him. <gasps> Who is this? There's actually like a CG of a character. At first with the long hair, I was like, it can't be Pashali. You didn't control him. But no, you can't because his hair's white. But like, who is this? Who is this person? Is it a girl? <gasps> Sephora, do you have a sister or a cousin? I have no idea. Well, okay, here's the thing. Long hair and a slightly pretty face means nothing in the scheme of games because it could absolutely be a beautiful man. Hi, look at Pashalia. Look at Jinnia. Uh, or it could be a girl. I don't know why I'm getting the vibe that it's a girl. It's probably the Ruffly Cloak, but... And maybe the bangs and a little bit of, like, the curl on the side. You know? I'm just getting that vibe. I'm just going to go with a girl voice because we don't have a lot of dude voices left. And I don't really know. He'll be a pretty boy, though. I'm not sure. But who is this? Who is this person that we've never been introduced to? But that is... Oh, is this the merchant? Oh my god, it's not. What's her face? It's not Luna, is it? It's got the same hair color. It is Ion's route, and that would make absolute sense if it were Luna, because Luna's father was also a slave, right? <gasps> Did she kill Balto? Is this Luna? You know what? Okay, I, the weird thing is, is I don't remember Luna having the long tendrils, but then now that little poofy thing on this, she had the little poofy hair. Little poof buns. 
And that's, oh my god, it is, isn't it? I can't believe that it took that long for me to put that together. But, like, I guess it's just the unexpected CG, and we're in Cultura, even though I know we're in Ion's Rad, and my brain is just like, who's this character? Then why are they being introduced? And I'm like, my brain was trying to put it together. I'm not very smart right now, okay? But I was trying to put it together as if we're in Zephora's route, but that wouldn't make any sense. It's Ion's route, but, like, Listen. Listen. Oh my god. I think it's Luna. Holy shit. I told you, haven't I? I'll take care of all the bad guys. It was a young woman holding a knife that simmered in the moonlight. Oh, shimmered in the moonlight. Who? Who <laughs> really was Luna? Oh my god. Oh. Are you by any chance, Spacey? Speechless. I could do was stare as she turned her gaze on us. Oh gosh, she looks crazy! I don't remember her having... It's funny because I remember her little, like, buns, but I don't remember the long tendril things. But maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Hello! It's been a while. I never thought we'd meet here. This is great! She looks possessed. Like, her eyes have no pupils. Luna spoke cheerfully, as if we'd happened to have passed each other on the street. I trembled in fear, seeing her smiling so happily in a place like this. This can't be... Oh, yeah, she... Okay, she did. <laughs> so, my brain was like, did she, though? Maybe she didn't. I don't remember. No, okay. Mm -hmm. I usually don't teach anyone, but we're comrades without our mama and papa, so I'll make an exception. Because you seem really sad just now. She also just looks so much littler here. And then she looks... You know what I mean? Like... It's like she aged five years, but... Are you really... The Luna I know? I accidentally spurted out what was on my mind. What are you saying? I'm the same as ever? Luna looked back at me, wiping the blood off her clothes and removing her hood. The next moment, Calivis let out a hoarse, frightened scream. The one lying on the floor is Balto, right? I was wondering if she stabbed Balto. Like, fuck yo. Luna, high five! I don't feel bad about this. This is great. I, I feel, I was wondering if she was being controlled, but I think she knew that her father was a slave with, and she knew what that mark meant, and she found out that the ring was here, and she must have been the merchant that was trying to buy the ring off Balto. And so she fucking stabbed him because, like, because her dad, you know what I mean? Like, she did, I don't want to say the right thing for the wrong reasons. I mean, murder's never the right thing, but Balto was a horrible human being. But she was going after the ring to probably, because her father was, like, a slave and he probably died in a fight, whatever. Man, I didn't think, I did not see this coming. Shit, okay. I right, high five game, good for you. Because I was like, you've made a lot of dumb decisions. What the shit? And you were like, we made a lot of dumb decisions, but this is where we're going. And it totally went off the fucking rail. Like, where did this come from? I, shit. He, he's dead. That was not Calypus's voice, but whatever. Oh, please calm down, your highness. Save it for later. He, yeah. Oh, he's crying. Aw. I know Jenny is mad like, hold it in, kid. We'll cry later and freak out. Your name is Luna, right? I have a question for you. You're the one who killed this man, Balto, correct? Yep, because Balto is a very, very bad person. And then you have adorable Luna covered in blood. <laughs> you know? <sighs> That's why I killed him. The sound of that chains. I killed him like how Papa fought all the bad guys. <laughs> That seal. Poor Luna has one too. Oh no. Yep, I got one too. The symbol of bravery that Papa and Ion have. My throat was dry. My heart pounded with terror and I felt faint. It feels so amazing. I have the same tattoo as Papa. I 
feel so light, like there's nothing to fear anymore. Did she get it done after? I shook my head, trying to ground myself. I forced myself to speak, voice trembling as Luna happily traced the seal on her body. You're... You're wrong, Luna. This is not the time to say that to a crazy girl with a knife. Just be like, could you just explain what's going on? That's not a symbol of bravery. Huh? What do you mean? Who's saying, all right, stop right there. Oh, God. What did I say? Fuck, what did I say? It's not exactly what I said, but Abby is a fucking trash human who's trying to get the ring and is gonna- Oh! Oh, I don't trust you! Shit! Oh, man. I kind of feel vindicated, though, that it's Abby and it's not fucking Aless. Like, don't do my glasses nerd like that, okay? But I did bank if someone was gonna be evil, it was gonna be him. Oh, the game did make me question my boyfriend, I'm not gonna lie. Like... My side piece. Okay, it made me question the side piece. I'm not counting Junie as a side piece. He's a main love interest, whether this game is going to give me a route or not. God damn it. Aleste is absolutely a side piece, though. But fucking Abby! You son of a bitch! What did I say? I sort of saw it coming, but then I was like, oh, okay, I guess not. That's why I was thinking Ferris, right? Because Abby had it. Nope, he ended up here. <gasps> You're trying to get... I don't, sure, he could be doing the, no, I'm trying to get the ring back because whatever, I live in Ferris and we want it back. But I don't think so. I think you got shady fucking dealings. Why would you do that? She was so happy she had something in common with her daddy. Don't be such a wet blanket. Read the room and congratulate her. A man we'd met in Ferris emerged from the next room. It was the owner of the seventh arena and Ion's old friend, Avi. Avi. Well done, Luna. Thanks for getting that bad guy. But go ahead and secure the exit. I'm going to talk to these guys for a sec. Okay! See you later, guys! Wait, I still... Didn't I tell you I'm doing the talking now? Where do you think you're going? Abby blocked the path back out of the room and fixed us all with a strange look. Been a while, huh, Ion? And you all too. No need for greetings, Abby. Explain what's happening here. Is this all you're doing? And the seal on Luna's body and Balto's murder? Balto deserved to be killed. I don't have the slightest bit of sympathy for him. <laughs> Sephora's like, I mean... But it's annoying to have my price snatched away from me. Give me a satisfactory explanation. He's like, but how dare you? That was my job. It was what I was living for. Hey now, don't glare at me like that. I'm expecting a thank you at the very least, you know? A thank you? Luna told you already, didn't she? He's a bad guy. You plan to use the ring to go after that prince, see? Huh? Me? Also what I suspected. What do you think it happened if he engraved the mark on the future king? He could have done anything he wanted. Oh, that's actually better than my plan of, like, con like killing him. Because I was like, what does that get you? And you're gonna kill everybody? That, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> See? That makes more sense! I Listen! How did you know the prince was gonna come here, though? Or was he just actually surprised? And he was like, oh shit, my prey right in my hands. I wasn't expecting this. Like, he was gonna go up and be like, oh hey, hi prince, whatever. Slap him on the, give him a hand, like, give him a handshake, fucking brand him. You know what I mean? Like, but anyway... But see, we brought his fucking prey right to him. So, you know, this is just... It had some elements that I expected, but a lot that I didn't. So, good job. If everything had gone well, controlling the country would have been a piece of cake. Which is what I expected he was going to do, just in a very different way. And this one makes more sense. <laughs> so you just decided to kill him out of some sense of justice? In that case, would you mind handing over the Intaglio ring? And the government will be managing the item. Abby simply shrugged his shoulders at Ginny's request. Oh no. Not can do. I need this ring to fulfill my dream. He then took the ring adorned with an eerie mark from his pocket. But I told you Abby wasn't a good guy. That's the Intaglio ring. 
This is my final warning as your old friend. Hand over that ring right this instant. Otherwise... Otherwise what? Go on. Huh? Puppy's lips twisted into a smirk. That was when Ion made his move. Oof, don't do it. Tan Man just jumped, closing the gap between them. He stretched out his hand with lightning speed. The ring within his reach. No, but Avi's smart too. So predictable. Discount Impy! Rowan in the name of Impy's everywhere! He really is Discount Impy, I'm not gonna lie. Avi was ready for Ion's move before he'd even made it. He also has the ring to control you. You know, honestly, in this version of Avi's sprite, he's actually pretty. Should have kept him like that instead of the goofy... The goofy one. He, his kick dealt a heavy blow to Ion's chest, making the latter fall back with a grimace. Damn... A surprise attack is one thing, but you're done for if I use the ring, you know? Stop! I couldn't scream that, I'm sorry. Ion leapt forward again. He was incredibly fast, yet he'd rushed in recklessly. Abby read his every move. My bad, buddy. Checkmate. We're just about to rush in to help when Abby shot us a look and slid the ring onto his finger. Oh, fuck. I knew he was gonna do something like this! I just didn't expect it to go kind of around and about and take a little leisurely detour before we got here. No! The heat emanating from the ring was so immense that even someone with no mana like me could feel it. <laughs> Florid, intangible chains twirled around Ion. Intangible chains twirl, oh, twined around Ion. Oh. Ion! Get out of here. Run, Spacey. Get away. For me, hurry. Constricted by chains, Ion collapsed, his head and limbs drooping like a marionette whose master hadn't picked it up yet. What happened? We were stunned as Avi casually ignored us and squatted down in front of Ion. This is where someone kicks him in the fucking face and knocks him out and steals the ring. He nonchalantly flicked off Ion's eye patch as he spoke. I remember, Ion. What are you? Where do you belong? I belong with a person who wants to walk beside wrong. Oh, stop it! That is like the cutest thing and my heart is so broken right now. Oh. Guys. Oh, my heart just stopped. Avi didn't let Ion finish speaking, instead roughly grabbing his head with a ringed with a ringed hand, forcing Ion to look into his eyes. Three years. It's only been three years since the underground arena collapsed. No one in Ferris can talk about it in public since it's taboo. Free gladiators are living their lives and hiding their past. Everyone acts like the underground arena was nothing but a bad dream. Do you think I'm gonna let you, the Grim Reaper of the Underground Arena? Pretend that bad dream never happened. Think again. Ugh. So let me remind you in case you forgot. Let me remind you of the thing you desperately want to forget. How to kill people. Oh my god, Abby looks so crazy right now. Ah! The ice arrows Kaliva shot at shot grazed Abby's cheek. You shouldn't have screamed stop. You should have just pelted him and impaled him. That would have been great, just ice thing and right through his chest. Fuck. Get away from Ion! Stop saying nonsense! When Abby jumped back with a frown, Zephora and I, I, and Zephora and I ran to Ion. Hang in there, Ion. Are you okay? Let's end this here. We still have two chapters left, so it ain't ending here. Let's take him and leave. There has to be some limit to the range of the magic. It's no use. The moment Avi said that, Ion's hands shot out with all his might. Don't kill Zephora! We were hurled into the air. <laughs> we slammed hard into the wall, our breath knocked out of us. I clutched my throat, gasping for air. <gasps> I didn't have a second to recover before Ion wrapped his hands around my neck. His huge figures digging into my throat. Oh my god, we're getting a CG of this. <laughs> What are you doing, Ion? 
Oh, it's so sad. I do want a beautiful CG of him without the eye patch, but like, this is like traumatic because he looks crazy. You know what I mean? Because he's being possessed. So like, it's Speezy, your friend and teammate. You're wasting your time. If he could come to his senses that easily, this wouldn't be happening in the first place. I can't breathe. It hurt. Painful. Oh, he's going to snap out of it. Like, that's what I was expecting to happen. Like, oh, it's going to be the power of love. But, like, because, like, I'm actually, though, surprised that they're doing this here instead of, like, Abby leaves with him when we go and then this happens a little bit later, like, we chase after him. Slowly losing consciousness. Is this how the Intaglio ring brainwashes people? It ain't quite brainwashing since the ring doesn't actually distort his mind. Those who are engraved with the steel silk can live a normal life as long as they're not given an order. But once their master's mana passes through the ring like this, ugh, their will weakens and they'll follow any order given to them. Calivus, this is the time to shoot more fucking ice right into Abby's skull. It's like a dream state. He's still somewhat conscious, but his body's only listening to me. He's still conscious? My eyes widened and flew to lock with ions. My vision was blurry with tears, but I could still see his pained expression. Ugh. Looked like he was about to cry. So sweet, he cries as he chokes me to death. Because he doesn't want to, but he has to. It's kind of sweet. You know what? It's it's painful, and it's but it's beautiful in a way. Like, instead of being, like, totally controlled where he chokes you to death, and later he's like, what happened? Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean I killed her? And he has no memory of it. This is so much better because it's so much more painful and it's such it's so much more of a gut punch for you to sympathize with Ion because there's like because the disconnect of like totally strangles the person he loves and then later is told that he did it that's gonna feel awful but it's worse when it's like he's doing it and he's like I am in here and I'm seeing my body do this and I can't fucking stop myself with the shit you know what I mean oh that's painful it's awful but the beautiful kind of awful where you're like, no, you feel for the character more. Oh, sorry. Ion I didn't mean to worry you. Reach up and touch his face. Oh God. Yes. I was like, I'm so <laughs> right. As the line popped up, I stretched my trembling hand to touch his cheek. When. Oh, water spirit. Jinnia's dignified voice suddenly echoed throughout the room. I beg thee that the silence of the deep ocean shall devour the flames. When did Ginny get water magic? Has he been hiding that shit? Should I have known that? Did I forget? So one of those things that like, oh yeah, Ginny has got some water powers, but like, did he say that? That he's made a contract, but we he just never talked about it and it was just like a passing thing in the beginning? Is he hiding shit? I just really, you know what? I can't make fun of anybody for being really stupid in the last part because that is me right now. Like, good God. In that instant, his grip on my neck loosened as the sensation of cold water mana surrounded us. Is it? I collapsed to the floor, nearly lifeless. I could only make strained, horrible noises. My world was so dark and blurred that I might as well have been blind. Well, I couldn't see much. Spacey. Clearly see Ion on the floor next to me. Pain etched into his face. Hey, Un. Um... What was that? What did you do? Oh my. Do I have any obligation to answer that question of yours? Ginny has shot the younger man a daring smile as he stared in confusion. Hey, Ion, stand up! That's an order! He can hear me, but... Abby glowered at Jinnia, looking both wild and hesitant. Tch! Flicked his tongue and spun around, calling to Ion. I've accomplished my goal here. Let's go, Ion. He spoke with displeasure, kicking the window open and jumped. This is what I thought Ion was going to leave. Ion followed behind him, putting his foot on the window sash before pausing. He looked back at me. Oh, now we look sad. W wait! Ion! If Abby was telling the truth, Ion must have been in a sleepwalking state as he followed the redhead's orders. 
sleepwalking, a condition that causes a sleeping person to get up and walk around. Those who are under the Intaglio Ring's command exhibit similar trance-like symptoms. Despite that, Leon stared at the handprints he'd left on my neck. I'm sorry. It was as if he wanted to say that from the beginning. As if he'd felt the need to say it. But I forced the words out from the back of his throat, still bound by the chains. And just like that, he jumped outside. I on. Don't force yourself. You're running out of oxygen. I down for now. Oh, look, Zephora, actually, look at his sad face. Oh, my precious clown bitch. This isn't your route, but that sweet look on your face. I love you so much. You actually do care somewhere inside. But I've got to chase after Ion. We only barely made it because Avi, Avi was being overly cautious. My vision was still blurry. The moment Jinnia took a deep breath, the mystic tool in his hand crumbled away. Is the mystic tool you used to stop Ion a disposable one? When Ion joined our troop, the country let me that let me that mystic tool just in case. Ah, so he doesn't. He's got okay. That explains it. Yes, as you may already know, I'm in charge of the countermeasure against the Intaglio Ring. Ah, that makes sense. He said that earlier. Okay, it wasn't from the very beginning. Was that the countermeasure he mentioned back then? It was a mystic tool that neutralizes fire magic for a short time. Relinquia. Relinquia! A, a mystic tool used to neutralize fire magic for a short period of time. It will fall apart once it exceeds its usage limit. This expensive item is hard to obtain, so Jinnia borrowed it from the king when Circus set off on their journey. And though it wasn't strong enough to entirely suppress the power of a great spirit's core item. How about we talk later and go after them now? We may only be able to catch up if we take the front entrance. I'm afraid it won't be that easy. What was that sound just now? I have no idea. It came from the lobby. Lord Baldur is in his room. Quick, go take a look in there. Before I knit his brow, frowning as the voice got closer. Just great. The city's leader's lying on the ground covered in blood with me by his side. Considering our history, I can hardly claim it's circumstantial. I highly doubt his men can act with restraint once they see this. Then we have to leave. Agreed. However... Looking down at Balto's corpse, he shoved his hand into the dead man's pocket. Then... I'll be taking this. Hey, Zephora got exactly what he wanted in his own thing, except for... No, it was just Luna had to stab him, so perfect. In Sephora's hand was the cherished labyrinth necklace. Can you move, Spacey? Yeah, we don't have time for this conversation, but this is what happens in movies. Quick, let's get in the door, guys! 20 minutes later. They done. Did they leave? Can we go in now? Are we supposed to? Please? Huh. Like, they forgot. They're like, I... What are you doing, man? I... It's like I forgot how doorknobs work. That weird, oh my god, yeah, me too, man. And then all of a sudden, as soon as we get out, right as we close the door behind us, then they figure out how doorknobs work. <laughs> Coming from the lobby! If we can hear them, they're right outside the fucking door. <laughs> this is just entertainment logic, where it's like, do we have time for this? We don't have time for this, but everybody monologues. Like me, right now. Y yeah. I slowly started walking with everyone's help. Now... Ion had been bound by those chains for so long that he'd never been able to think beyond tomorrow. He'd finally pictured his future, and the thing that sucks is we came in to steal the ring right when the- and that sucks. He told me he wanted to lead an ordinary life with me once he got the Intaglio ring. Once he was free. But now... <laughs> Desperately trying to hold back my whimpers, I left the mansion. Those guys are still trying to figure out how to open the door. Is it? What? Oh, now we're in chapter eight. Okay. See, this makes it where, like, I was like, are we going to do this now? Like, no, they took him away. Oh, now we're eye on. Oh, we have to start sad. No, oh, I don't like that. Or eye on. Ten years ago, I was a country bumpkin who had just come to Ferris, the dual city, after losing both of my parents in an accident. Security Forces training school was in Ferris, and the enlistment exam was also held there. 
I wanted to be independent. Hence, I decided to try joining the forces because they provided the officers with food, clothing, and shelter. Be someone who protects people. And that's what my parents wanted for me. However, with the Chloris bloom rate decreasing across the city, public safety deteriorated at a rapid pace. Crime and corruption ran rampant behind the scenes, including human trafficking. I was naive and ended up being deceived by a slave trader sold to the underground arena. On that day... The disgusting seal was engraved into me. It's interesting they chose to brand his eye. Aww! Like little baby Ion and little baby Abby who, like, you know what, can get punted into the fucking sun. I don't care if you were friends once. You're trash now. Ugh. You're Ion, right? You're a fool, big time. What do you mean? I gotta do baby Ion voice and I don't know how to do that. We're valuable possessions for that to them, you know? We have death matches, but only once a month at most. You get food, clothing, and shelter if you fight, and as long as you don't die, you get medical treatment too. But you still go out of your way to go against him and get that seal engraved on you. What a fool, I tell you. But hurting people is bad. My parents always told me to be a man who protects people. I do not wish to live a life that disgraces their teachings. I can't do baby iron voices good enough, right? Well, how admirable of you. But you better get rid of that mindset if you want to survive here. Anyway, that seal's already been engraved on you. So you don't have a choice anymore. Your body no longer belongs to you. If only I were a little bit smarter and did what Avi had told me. Perhaps I could have played my cards right and chosen another path. Unfortunately, I was much stupider, more incompetent and stubborn than now. As a result, I was thrown into the worst path possible, becoming a slave of the seal. So they probably put it on his eye as super punishment. Because I was kind of wondering that, and I'm glad they put that in there. Because it was like, why do they only brand certain people? And it's like, oh, because you're fighting against them. If you go along with what they say, cool. But you fought against them? Fuck you, branding. And maybe what he did was like, like normal people. Hey, you're fighting a little, ooh, on the arm, buddy. Okay, like whatever. But Ion was like, probably super, super fighty. And they were like, right in your fucking eye. That'll teach you. You know what I mean? It was like... A harsher punishment punishment, you know? Time for battle, Ion! No need to hold back. Kill as many as you can. Just as the seal tells you. I don't want to fight. I don't want to hurt others. I want to kill anyone. Whenever he commanded me through that ring, the world grew hazy and was filled with distant, sorrowful cries. It was like a nightmare I couldn't wake from. I was simply a bystander. I could only watch the tragedy I caused from afar. I not remember. The enemy in front of me should have been my fellow slave, trapped in the same cell. Both of us wished to survive, to live another day. I not remember anything. Not their name, voice, or face. Becoming someone who protects people? How could that ever be possible? I could not protect anything, neither my parents' teaching nor my fellow inmates, not even her precious smile. Protect anything at all. Or rather, it was the exact opposite. I hurt her with my own hands. Despite that, she hid her pain and fear of death while I had strangled her. Would she have looked at me with such gentle eyes at a time like that? What did she want to say to me? What do you... Oh, that's me. What do you want to do? Suddenly, the words she had uttered back then rang in my ears. Stop it. I couldn't stop fighting, no matter how much I wanted to. Although I would not be surprised if I ended up forgetting what I had been wishing for one day. Her question for me had been so very cruel. Yet so kind. This hurts my heart. It was a really great route to start with. It hurts my heart, man. Um, assuming we're still eye on. My painful yet peaceful dream ended abruptly. 
Where am I? Is this the underground arena? Correct. Brings back memories, huh? The prison-like arena. The traces of all the battles fought on the stage. Looks exactly the same as it did three years ago. Feels like time has stopped in this place. Heavy. I'm afraid I do not feel at all nostalgic seeing this. Well, yeah, because, see, Abby is like, yeah, but see, now I'm in power, so I don't care if I hurt other people. And, like, in the un the above-ground arenas, people are willingly fighting. Abby is down here like, I'm gonna make people fight to the death. It's gonna be great. And it's like, you don't remember having to do that, and you think putting other people in that situation is great. Like, that's the sign that you have severely gotten fucked. You know what I mean? Like, you were a slave. You were pitted against other people and had to murder them. So you think once you get out of that, that, like, doing that to other people sounds fine? You know what I mean? Like, that, your brain is broken. Like, I on spirit and heart is kind of broken a little. But his mind is still there where he's like, no, this shit's wrong. It was always wrong. It's still wrong. And Abby's like, yeah, no, I was wrong when it was me. But if I do it to other people, cool. You know what I mean? That's where you know your fucking brain has literally fucking snapped. And it's kind of sad, but also, fuck you, dude. No sympathy for you. Punt him into the sun. Like, I do think they kind of make him a sympathetic villain. Like, you can kind of understand. Like, yeah, I want to feel bad for you. But no, because now you've literally, like, lost your fucking marbles and think it's okay to do to people what's been done to you. And... I should have some sympathy for the situation you were in. And I did have situ sympathy for that. But not anymore. Nope. Son, yeeting. Out. Did you bring me here simply to talk about the past? Chill out, dude. I doubt it could last even five minutes if I were to fight y'all fair and square. But you know full well that resisting's pointless, right? And that's a smart decision. Come on, man, let's get along. I don't want to call my kidnapper my friend. I will say it again. Hand over the ring and release me. And what are you going to do once you're free? I... You going to go back to him? Ha! <laughs> you wish. They must have realized you're a walking time bomb by now. Even the best animal tamer out there can't keep a lion without a cage, you know? Oh my god, Avi is being such a tool because it's like, without the ring... I wouldn't have this problem. The problem is the ring and the control. Ions doesn't just have a short fuse, you know what I mean? But Avi's manipulating all of Ion's self-doubt. Oh, cold! You know what? You're worse than I thought! Super punt him into the sun! Fuck you, dude! I hope someone stabs you! I kind of want the tiny prince to just fucking ice shrapnel right through your heart. I'd say right through your skull, but I want you to feel it painfully as you slowly bleed to death on this pike of ice. <laughs> I do not have any fucking chill, okay? <laughs> no matter how much I wanted to argue, it only grown. The only thing that managed to escape my lips were a few pointless words of acceptance. What do you get out of doing this? I can understand wanting to carve a seal on his highness's skin and manipulate him. Like Baldo had planned. But I don't see the point of keeping me... Because you're my pal. Come again? Evie smiled sadly as he glanced around the arena. You see, this underground arena was about to be demolished. So I bought it. Such a waste to just bury this place. I do not understand. You know this place is filled with nothing but horrible memories. Yeah, I know. My life was at risk every day. I fought beasts, fiends, and other slaves as the rich watched and jeered. Nothing good came out of it. Only nasty memories. Okay. I, I'm with you. Sympathy point, maybe a one right now. And you're gonna quickly yeet that into the fucking sun here with you. Hopefully drag him behind it, but, I, but I'm curious. Okay. Then why? Those memories are exactly why. I won't let them be erased. I'll never let him forget the blood we shed in this place. I'll force him to remember. I was just wondering, vengeance? Okay. I could not help questioning him when I heard that. It was as if he despised everything. Are you still thinking about what happened to your brother? 
Who knows? He grimaced for a moment. Then, he left. Never would I have thought I would be coming here again. I mean, I kind of understand Avi's point here. Like, I will never let them fucking forget what they did to us. But, like, at some point, like, do have to learn to let it go. You know what I mean? It takes a long time, so I can't be, like, can't begrudge him for being, like, because it's only been, like, three years. It's not like it's been ten years where, like, dude, simmer down. It's been three years. That's pain, that agony, all that shit he dealt with for, like, probably ten years. It's still there. I get it. I can understand that, that you're pretending to be well-adjusted and you're not. But, like, what are you actually going to, aside from, like, I won't let them erase it. They need to remember. Like, I get that, but, like, I, his, the rest of his master plan is still, you know, out there looming. But you were willing to take control of and make your friend, someone you say is your pal, a slave. You're willing to do that to Luna. You're willing to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you are willing to kill other people. Like, you are not... Like, all there. You're almost as bad right now as the people who did this to you. And you're slowly going to become worse than them, which is kind of fucking saying something. Still want to eat him into the sun, because nothing good is going to come out of this. It's not like he's going to be like, oh, yeah, you're right. And like, no, nope. Mm -mm. You don't get a redemption five minutes after your evil fucking plot where you almost killed me and tried to make Ion do it. And you're controlling other. Like, no, nah, dude. Nah. You should know better. I get the whole maybe not wanting people to like, but you're gonna end up, what, finding all the people who did that to you and branding them and making them, like, you're gonna turn into those people. And like, I can't say I'm not with y'all on the, like, yeah, no, I mean, there were times where you were like, I will make them pay. Like, I get it. But that just makes you as bad, if not worse, than the people who did that to you. Like, yes, it's okay to revel in their comeuppance. Which they're probably never going to get, which is sad, because rich people never get a comeuppance. But, like, that doesn't mean you'll go out and stab them, you know? <laughs> like, you know? Uh, I scanned the deserted arena. No guards. Hmm. Escape would be possible, but... He must have left no guards here on purpose. He knew I had nowhere to go, even if I did escape. That's sad. Even if I managed to get outside the ring's sphere of influence, I would still only spend the rest of my life in fear. Ion's like, I'm gonna take control now. Oh, well now, actually, Ion's having a pity party. Oh, here you are, Ion. Huh? Abby asked me to take care of your daily necessities. I'll show you around. Come with me. I simply nodded and followed her, although my steps quickly halted. Can I ask you a question? Why are you following Avi? Because I work here? I never knew murdering people was a part of a receptionist's duties. Oh, you mean that Kultura man? I killed him because he was a bad guy. Plus, Avi complimented me and gave me lots of rewards. Poor thing. It's because she was young losing her parents, and, like, Avi's, like older brother figure in her life and that's so fucked up that he's taking advantage of that she smiled innocently as her fingers lovingly grazed the seal on her skin watching was so unbearable i opened my mouth again and that's not the symbol of bravery you speak of luna it's a curse that robs people of their will what are you saying papa told me the seal gave him courage not a symbol that gives courage it's a slave's brand you're engraved with a seal. You're forced to obey the ring's command. When your father was actually... Shut up! Stop talking! I let out a mental sigh as she shook her head and resumed walking. I am a truly... I'm a truly poor speaker. If I were Spacey, I would be able to tell Luna my point without hurting her feelings. Spacey. A wry smile came to my lips when I thought of her. Not get her out of my head. Aww, that's sweet. 
in this traumatic time. No matter how much we wanted to chase after them and save Ion, we couldn't get away from the crowd. We were too busy explaining the situation and calming people down after they lost their leader in the Labyrinth Sentinel. The sudden death of their leader hinders city administration. We need to choose a representative to handle not only the Labyrinth Necklace, but the Craftsman's Market as well. It was supposed to be the next Sentinel, but that's all in the past now. Still, I can't just sit by and watch the city fall into chaos. Nobody argued with Sephora. We understood his feelings. That was why we decided to contact the other group who'd gone to Ferris. Oh, wait, was that supposed to be, like... That was us going back and forth with them. We were busy explaining... I'm not sure, like... Some of that, I feel like, was supposed to be Zephora, but, like, he was supposed to be the next Labyrinth Sentinel. But that's all in the past. I can't sit by and watch this... I feel like, oh, that was Zephora. Oh, this is all Zephora. Oh, okay, never mind. See, that's helpful. Anyway, I'll read it again. Sudden death of their leader hinders city administration. We need to choose a representative to handle not only the Labyrinth Necklace, but the Craftsman's Market as well. It's supposed to be the next Sentinel, but that's all in the past now. How? Because then you, well, I mean, you just stole the necklace, but, and then it's going to make it look like you killed him. And I guess that's it, but it's like, still, I can't just sit by and watch the city fall into chaos. That, I figured, was Zephora, but the rest of it kind of seemed weird, because it's very disjointed. But, anyway. Uh, contact the group. Because we were convinced Avi would be heading there, ominously, they never responded. Uh-oh. We managed to deal with the general aftermath with everyone's cooperation, but by the time we left Kultura, five days had already passed. That sucks. And, like, where is everyone else? Good. Bye. It was only one word, yet it kept going round and round inside my head with each turn of the carriage wheel. I want to stay with everyone. I want to remain with my precious comrades, who accept me for who I am. I want to go on another journey. Oh, on our handhold ECG. I want to walk around a city. Oh, your face lit up when we found something new. Or how you halted when we came across a delicious smell. I simply want to walk around without any purpose in mind. What you told me. You told me you wanted to build a bright future together, and I believed you. Why did you say something like that? You gently touched my tender neck. I could still feel the heat from his hands as they cut off my breathing. My fingers grazed the bruises on my neck. I remembered the suffering on his face and the tears gathered in his eyes. My own pain was already far behind me, but I knew wherever he was, Dylan was still hurting. I know, and that's what's adorable. <laughs> oh. How are you feeling, Spacey? Huh? You seem to be in a great deal of pain. Your neck still hurt. Oh, no. I was just spacing out. I don't know why everybody doesn't expect me to space out when my name's space. <laughs> anyway, you sure are you sure you're coming with us, Zephora? I feel like we're slowing Kultura's recovery down. We finished laying the groundwork. Not that weak. We'll do just fine without a sentinel for a while. We're worried about you all. I don't know what you'd do without me. Like how he's like, ah, the little look on his face. He's I love him so much. God, what would you guys do without me? I can't leave you behind right now. I'm not ready, guys. I need to make sure Ion's okay. That's really what he means. He's so soft on the inside. Thank you. I moved on to another topic after that. We should arrive at, we should arrive at Ferris tomorrow, right? Yeah, but we gotta meet up with the others before going after Ion. Have you still not heard anything from them, Jinnia? Yeah, I'm worried. Jinnia shrugged and shook his head, concerned. And they might be lost somewhere, but still. And this whole thing seems kind of suspicious. They're trapped, too. Avi, Avi kidnapped them, no doubt. Something have happened in Ferris? Well, well Dilio is very forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> the child ain't wrong. 
Maybe you just forgot to return our letter. Except the furballs with that lizard in the airhead. Doubt he'd do anything that would make you worry. The lizard in the airhead. <laughs> Zephora's not wrong, though. Billy is a lizard, and Pashali is a little bit of an airhead. It's more like the idiot in the airhead, but like, you know, and the furball, yes, exactly. The atmosphere was heavy. The air filled with the creak of the wheels. I like how everyone's like, maybe they just forgot. And Zephora's like, nah, Rady ain't that fucking... The other two were idiots, but Rady wouldn't do that to her. And we're like, thanks for reassuring me that they're all kidnapped or dead. <laughs> Sephora's not going to pull any punches. Hope they're all safe in the underground arena. But even if we were able to see Ion again, can we save him? Do you mean Ion? Yeah. Words spilled out of my mouth uncontrollably. Someone's been carrying such a heavy burden all this time. Heavier than I imagined. That the seal is the reason why he acted distant. Maybe the worlds we live in are just too different. Back when we first met, Ion had been so clueless about the world around him. It was understandable, considering he'd been living in a world where he was forced to take other people's lives to survive. His life had been far from normal. Navi had been a gladiator slave, just like Ion. So maybe... Maybe he was the only one who could truly understand him. Let's say we meet again in Ferris. I don't think my voice will reach him. The worlds are far too di- Uh, uh, and that's enough of that. Ouch! Put a hand over my forehead after he suddenly gave it a hard poke. I love it, Jinnia's like, uh-uh, no, stop that shit. W what was that for, Jinnia? And this is what you call tough love. I was bewildered. Jinnia glowered at me, shrugging his shoulders. It looks like you're misunderstanding something here. What are you supposed to do now? Choose between these two options? What is this? A pop quiz? Option one. I learn about his past and step into his world. Option two. Drag him out of his world. Presented with those two options, I chose... Drag him out! I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, learning about his past is one thing. But you want to... But his past is what's holding him down in time. You know what I mean? So you kind of want to drag him out. You know, like learning about his past is good. Like I want to learn about his past and who he is, but we know that his past was traumatic. So dragging him out of that past into the future would be the better thing, I think. But let's see. Drag him out. Fuck yeah. I'll drag him out. Oh, hello. Okay. Jesus. Why? Once asked him what he wanted to do. And you know what he said? Like before, when we walked around together. How your face lit up when we found something new. Or how you halted when we came across a delicious smell. I simply want to walk around without any purpose in mind. He said all that because he felt ordinary life was out of reach. He knew he couldn't live a normal life if things stayed the same. And for that reason, he won't hold his hand if he finds it hard to go alone. I'm not going to step into his world. I'm going to drag him into a brighter world, no matter what it takes. Exactly what I was thinking. Perfect. After hearing my speech, Jinnian nodded lightly and shot me a playful smile. His childhood was painful, and his wishes distorted. it. He was robbed of the future every child imagines for themselves. He assumed he didn't deserve that future because he'd taken the lives of others. But really, he's afraid of finding happiness. He's trapped so deep in the darkness that he can't escape by himself. He needs help. And you know what? You've actually melted his stubborn heart a little. Ginny pointed at the back of my hand. Leon made me a promise. Because Ginny saw this. You know, it's kind of nice that Ginny saw it. I swear I will never, ever go away without speaking to you first. He kept his promise because he said goodbye. Even when I have to leave you one day. I promise I will return to your side. And this is not an order that I am forced to follow. And this is a promise I make simply because I want to. He hadn't been ordered by anyone. He'd made that vow of his own free will. Can I reach him? Of course you can. I guarantee it. 
You know, I was trapped in my own world too until just a while ago. I doubt I'd, I'd have ever changed if you hadn't reached out to me. His lips curve into a smile. If I can do it, he can do it too. I do. If I can do it, you can do it too. I had said the exact same thing to Calivus before. Thanks, Calivus. You're right. I'm sure I'll get through to him. Mm-hmm. You really love Ion, after all. Come again? Me? Ion? N no way! Don't tell me you were actually trying to hide that. I think Zephora's like, idiot. Wait, since when have all of you known? I can tell the eyes of a maiden in love at a single glance. C hold on, guys! This isn't the time to talk about that, you know? Ginia grinned at my red, flustered face. And no, no, this is exactly the time to do it. A people are strongest when they have a clear desire and goal. You want to save Ion and live a happy life with him, right? And those feelings of yours will surely help you out. That's... He's not actually that stubborn, you know. You're our secret weapon. I go persuade him. I show him the power of a maiden in love. I get his point, but... Why do you have to put it that way? For the first time in a while, the carriage was once again filled with laughter, though I had to endure their teasing. That's so adorable, I love it. I know Ginny Zephora's like, What, did you think we were... Did you think everyone was stupid? Everyone has fucking... No, everyone knows. We're like, I thought I was hiding it well. And they're like, even the fucking seven-year-old who literally just came out of a coma two days ago fucking figured it out. <laughs> But I love it. You know what I mean? Like, it's cute. Anyway, I will wrap this part up here. We will continue next time. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.